Globus. We will have you download Globus today and transfer some small files using it. You can transfer any size file you want. Um, I found it a little weird to wrap my head around, but once I figured it out so that we could do this class, it didn't seem so bad. It's used by national labs and computing clusters, including us. Um, it uses something called grid FTP to handle large files. And this grid FTP improves transfer speeds and reliability. It is a little odd to work with, I agree. Um, so so it in theory does a better job, faster and more reliable than SCP and SFTP. So you can use Globus to transfer data between two endpoints and they are pictured here. There's one on the left here. This is Saucy, this is my local machine. And then there's one on the right. This is the, um, the HPC, the groups DKT area. Um, you can even use Globus to transfer stuff between two HPC directories because in reality, while this might seem like it's just a housekeeping issue, if you're transferring a lot of little files from one directory to another on the HPC, that's gonna be tough on it. So you can use Globus to do that. So you interact with the endpoints in a browser window. So this is um, Chrome, the tab in Chrome and you have a panel for each endpoint. All right, so to get this Globus thing going, you install a program called Globus Personal Connect. We will do that today. Here are pictures of how it looks on your Mac and on Windows. It's just a tiny little thing with a lowercase g um, that shows up in your uh, your status bar on the Mac in your system tray on Windows. Um, they don't make this terribly public, but you can sign up for something called Globus Plus, which is free and add some extra capabilities. So if you want to transfer data between two personal computers, you can use Globus to do that if you sign up for Globus Plus. Or if you wanna share a directory on your computer with a colleague via Globus, you can do that with Globus Plus. So in that case where you want to try out Globus Plus, you can sign up for Plus under Groups over here on the side. You just have to search for, when you do set up, you search for um, U Arizona Globus Plus users. So neither Globus, personal nor Globus Plus provide HIPAA protected transfers. The HPC does not currently offer any HIPAA protected transfer capabilities, which kind of makes sense since the HPC does not have any HIPAA protected anything. I presume that will change if they, uh, they become compliant. All right, in order to transfer data, Sometimes it's really crucial to archive that data. So what archiving does is it combines a bunch of files into one file. If you've used zip before, and I know you all have, then you have used archiving. Data transfers take a lot longer for a bunch of small files than for a single large file. So if I have um, 10 gigabytes with which contains thousands of tiny little files, it will take a lot longer to transfer that than if I have one big file of 10 gigabytes. So in addition, uh, if you have a data set with links in it, for example, you have been experimenting with data lad and you now have a bunch of links in your data directory, this will not transfer correctly unless it is archived first. It, all the links will be broken. So to avoid these problems and transfer large directories to and from the HPC, you should archive them. Now, archiving can be a kind of intensive process and you may have to spend a little of your allocation time on the HPC side 
to archive and unarchive things, but it's worth it as I'm going to illustrate. All right, so um, I recently worked on a project which resulted in about 100 gigabytes of um, processed files, many of them very tiny little files. And I thought, well, I'll just transfer that back to my, um, to my computer from the HPC. Uh, without archiving those, because I didn't realize how crucial archiving was, the file transfer was about half done 24 hours later, at which point I killed it. And then I experimented with a bunch of different archiving options. So there's something called zip, which you've all seen. There's another uh, tool called tar, um, which is going to be the one that, that I'm going to suggest you use. And you can use tar and zip together, which I'm going to suggest you don't bother with. So what I found out with my experiments with my 100 gigabyte directory is that zipping took a long time and did not confer much benefit. This is because the nifty images that we're working with are already zipped up. So there's very little to zip up and the zip program just had to look through every one of my many thousands of files and decide whether any of them could be zipped up. So in this example, I archived a 100 gigabyte directory in seven minutes with tar. Uh, and it took about 76 minutes to archive using tar and zip together. So adding zip made the resulting archive 2% smaller, but it took 11 times longer to complete. So based on that experiment, I recommend that you tar, but do not zip your neuroimaging data. Seven minutes being much better than 76. 